What's up everyone, Take Down here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can upgrade your SSD in your PlayStation 5 to one or two terabytes of additional storage. PlayStation 5 actually made it super easy to do, and there's actually a slot where you can insert an SSD for additional storage. So let's get into this. So the one that I went with is the one that is an official licensed product from PlayStation, and that is the WD Black SN850, the PlayStation 1. This one here is $355, and the reason I got it is because it includes the heatsink. Now, you can get cheaper options for the SSD and get a heatsink off of Amazon, but I just wanted one where it's all together, which was easier to do, and it's actually easier to format. So the best part about this, it includes a five-year warranty through Western Digital. So let's get into the install. So to do this with your PlayStation 4 console, you're gonna flip it over. So the PlayStation logo here is facing the bottom. So you're gonna to want to come on this side here, opposite from the disc drive, and you're going to pull upwards and also towards you at the same time. And it will come off just like that. Super easy, I'm gonna push this to the side here. And now the spot where the SSD goes is right here. Very convenient for the PlayStation 5. I'm gonna take a Phillips head and we're gonna remove this screw here. And we're gonna take out the cover. Now you will see in here that there is a screw off to the side here with a spacer and you will see all the different spots so depending on the size that you did purchase. So I'm going to first take this screw out because we are going to be using it. Just like that, we have the spacer out and we do have the screw. I'm gonna push those off to the side and now I'm gonna open up the drive here, which looks just like this. Now we're gonna install this. So as you can see, it's pretty easy concept here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push this in with the chip part here, these little prongs facing towards the disk drive and you're going to push it in and secure it and then one of the holes will be free where you can secure it on the back so you will put in the spacer and then you will screw it down. So first what I'm going to do is just line it up here and see that it is the longest hole. So I'm going to take the spacer here and I'm going to put it in that one there. Then we're going to put in the SSD here. So there is a little slot here, which it's hard to see, but also hard to miss. And you're going to put it in just like that. And then you're gonna push it towards the disc drive there, as far as it will go, and that will lock it in. So now whenever it's rest on the spacer here, it is going to be even. If you forget the spacer, there is going to be a gap there. Whenever you screw it down, you're actually gonna be pushing the hard drive down like that, and you'll damage the end here. So make sure you, if you're going to install it, put the spacer in. And again, I chose one that includes the heat sink. You can do it separately where you just have to install the SSD onto the heat sink and then put it in the same way as I'm showing you now. But with the spacer and the SSD already in, the only thing left is to put this screw in and you're going to tighten it. You're going to make sure that the screw is tight, but do not over tighten it because that could damage the SSD. Now with that in, you're going to put the cover back on. Just literally slides on like that. And you're going to put this screw right back in just like that. And then you're going to put the cover back on here and you can actually see how it is designed here where you have to kind of put it on like that and then opposite from what you did instead of pushing this way you're going to push this way while pushing down just let me get this stuff out of my way here and just like that it is on solid you're going to want to make sure just double check to make sure you have all of the parts in and nothing is out and then now you're going to want to connect this all back up turn it on and with this ssd it should automatically start formatting for your playstation 5 it'll tell you the speeds and then you can start transferring games over which will not take too long so let's do that so here we go i plugged everything back in turned on the playstation 5 and it does take a minute to load once it does load it will say that it recognizes the m2 ssd and that you need to format it so you're going to hit 
it will be on do not format. You're gonna move it over to format and you're going to hit X and it will format, which as you can see, this is real time. It looked really, really fast. And it's actually gonna tell you the speed. So on the box, it does say 7,000, but right here you can see it says 6546, which is really, really fast. That's actually faster than PlayStation recommends. So it's a really fast speed. So you're gonna hit okay. Now it is formatted, so to change the settings, to have games get saved to that, you're going to want to go into settings, storage, and then install location. So we're gonna do that. Once it finishes rebuilding the database, turn on the PlayStation 5. Gonna log in here. Settings, storage, and then location and we're gonna do PlayStation 5 games and apps we're gonna change it to the M2 SSD storage and this one right here I'm gonna leave for my extended storage so any PlayStation 4 games and apps are gonna to go to my 2 terabyte external or sorry 3 terabyte external hard drive and any PS5 stuff is gonna go on to my 2 terabyte storage so I'm gonna go here and as you can see there actually is two terabytes of free space, which is incredible. Normally with hard drives and anything like that, usually a percentage is used up by uh, installs and stuff like that, or uh, updates and stuff. This here, you get a full two terabytes to use of free storage, which is awesome. And then you see here, I have three terabytes of my uh, Western Digital external hard drive that's just gonna be for PS4 and then I have my 600 gigabytes on the console so this is how you upgrade your PlayStation 5 SSD for additional storage it's really easy to you do but it does cost a little bit of money hopefully you guys now have your PS5 upgraded with a couple extra terabytes on your SSD I'll see you guys in the next video please take care peace